Oh, praise the Lord. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to you. We offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving continuously unto the Most High God for His grace and His mercy and yours forever. 2022, He has taken us through and we are on the 25th of December which is the Christmas period that he has given unto us. We are seeing the last Sunday of the year 2022. It is a grace that has taken us through. We give all the glory to him. And because today is a Christmas holiday, the season we have the team, Jesus Christ, the King of Glory. Jesus Christ, the King of Glory. And we are taking our scriptures from the book of the Psalmist, Psalm 24. The Psalmist 24. Reading from verses 3 through to 10. Psalm 24, verse 3 to 10. And I read in Jesus' name. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of, of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. The purpose of God for mankind is that he, all, he wants all mankind to know him. That he is the Lord. That he exists. And he is the reward of those who will seek him. So God has created us. Therefore through Abraham, God purposed that through him, all nations of the world, including you and I, will be blessed. This was the intent of God. For the creation of you by God is that he wants you to know him. I pray that you will know God. So when the descendants of Abraham were in captivity, God himself chose Moses and brought them out of slavery from Egypt to Canaan land. Bible says that on the wilderness, God wanted his people to know him. He wanted them to be in their presence. So he made an ark of tabernacle for them. So that this will signify his presence in his people. That wherever they are, anytime, in any condition, they will know that the God is with them. This afternoon, I want you to know that throughout the year, the Lord was with you. As we listened to the testimony of our dear beloved sister. He has gone through difficult times. Even when doctors couldn't even give a name to the sickness. He told, she told the doctors that it's okay. Whether you have a name for it or not, it's okay. Why? I have God. Amen. He failed exams. And he said to herself, this is not the time for my success. But my time is coming. Amen. And in December, he, she has overcome. Yes. Beloved, God wants his presence to be in you. So the ark of the tabernacle was with the Israelites so that they would know that every time God was with them. God through that, took them to Canaan. The Bible says that when they 
they sinned and became disobedient, God allowed the ark of the covenant to be taken out of them. God's presence left Israel. Though he wants to be with them, he wants to reveal himself to them. When they sinned and they became unrepented, he took his presence out of them. Beloved, there are many of us who think that because they are believers, God is always with them. Because they are Christian, God is always with them. No. God is near to those who are, who are near unto him. God is near to all who call on him. God is near with, to all those who serve him with their heart. Those who seek the Lord, Bible said, they shall find him. So in spite of your Christianity, God wants you to know him by seeking him. And I pray that your heart will be open unto him. So that day by day, his presence, which is the ark of God, will continue to dwell among you. God is our faithful God. Therefore, when Israel realized their sinfulness and they realized their dependency on God, the existence on God, they cried unto him. And the Bible says that God allowed the Philistines to bring back the ark of God into their midst. Don't forget that the ark was God's presence in them. And it was the Psalm 24 that we just read. When David realized the king, realized that he needed the presence of God to be in the people of Israel, he built an ark, tabernacle, tent on Mount Zion in Jerusalem. And said that if the ark of God is coming back, he wants the ark to be on the mountain of Zion. So that anywhere, everywhere, every Israelite, when he lift up his hands, head on, to the Mount Zion, he knows that God is with his people. So it was when the ark was being brought from the captivity of Philistines, from Edom, when the ark was returning to among the people of Israel, that the king himself, together with the bandsmen and people of Israel, where they were all carrying the ark and dancing, bringing the ark, bringing God's presence again into the midst of his people. So it was when they were bringing the ark that they were singing, carrying the ark, going to Mount Zion, that David, the Holy Spirit, used me to sing this Psalm 24. The ark is coming back. So this king realized that God was coming to them. Then he was saying, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in the holy place? The one whose hands are clean and pure heart. The one who doesn't trust in idols. When you continue, he says, such is the generation who will seek his face. The people of Jacob, lift up your heads, you gates. So when the ark was climbing the mountain Zion, David the whole thing was saying, all should lift up their heads for the ark of God is coming. The one strong and mighty in battle is coming. The king of Israel was coming. Praise the Lord. In the New Testament, God has already revealed himself unto us. Already, God through Jeremiah has already prophesied that upon Mount Zion will the Redeemer come. God will come upon Mount Zion he was prophesying about a king whose kingdom was eternal and that was one who was coming. It wasn't the ark on Mount Zion but somebody, he is called the redeemer. He will be the ark and that will come down. Hallelujah. So Bible says that at a point in time when God's time was fully come he wanted all mankind to know him. This time not in, only in Israel not on Mount Zion but in a different manner. Bible says that at a point in time, and shepherds were on the fields watching their flock by night. And Bible says an angel appeared unto them. He told them that, 
And when he appeared unto them, the Bible says that the glory of God was shown around. In that glory of God has already come down on earth. And the whole world didn't know. Bible says, when he announced to them that do not be afraid, but a savior has been born in the house of David. Jesus has come down. God himself has come down. A divine act has now descended. The redeemer on my Zion is now here. And Bible says that, having said this, a host of angels came down. And when they came together with the angels, they sang Glory to God in the highest and on earth the peace. Goodwill towards all men. Glory of God through Jesus Christ. The birth has come unto men. Bible continues that the word became flesh and dwelt among men. And we saw his glory. So when Jesus Christ descended, beloved, he was the glory of God. Praise the Lord. So Jesus Christ is the glory of God. And not only is he the glory of God, he's also the king. So our text says, who is this king of glory? Jesus is king. When the shepherds were searching for Christ Jesus, they came to be to Jerusalem, the accent. We are seeking for the one who is born the king of the Jews. He was just a toddler. He had just been born, but they were declaring that he is the king of the Jews. Who is this king of the Jews? He's the son of God, Christ Jesus, whom God has given unto you and I. That God, in his own good time, has brought him unto earth. He is king. At the conception of Jesus, the angel told Mary that the one you were born he now have an everlasting kingdom. Luke 1, 31 to 33. You have everlasting kingdom. So our God, our Savior is king eternal. And he will continue to be king. Hallelujah. So beloved in Christmas we don't celebrate Jesus who has been born. He's already born. Yes. But we celebrate the one who is the king of glory. Yes. The savior and our God and our master and our Lord. Yes. God wants us in our New Testament time that the ark of God who, which was on Mount Zion for Israelites no more will dwell there. But through Christ, who is the ark of God, who is the glory of God, he will descend into the hearts of every man. Don't you know that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. So now we don't have the ark of God anymore anywhere, but your heart is the ark of God. God dwells in your heart. So in this Christmas, God has visited your heart. God is within you. God is within his people. So when you come to church and I come and we gather, the ark of God is in our presence. For you are the ark of God. May you carry God's presence wherever you go. But then, David says that those whom the ark of God dwells, people whom God dwells in our hearts, they are some specific people. They are people of the world, but they don't belong to the world. How do we stand before God's presence? How are we the ark of God? Stand before him day by day. David was telling us in verse 3, who shall send the hill of God and stand in his place? Who will stand in the place of God day by day? These are the people God has chosen that we are talking about today. They are people who are righteous. Anyone who carries the ark of God in this Christmas season should be people who are righteous. You are righteous through Christ. Hallelujah. 
The fact that you carry God's presence doesn't mean that his glory will continue to be upon you without you seeking him. Without you allowing him to be in you. Without you being like Christ. Without you being the righteous person. The, those people which have clean hands. People with clean hands. Righteousness means people with clean hands. Many people love to be called Christians and they attend church day by day. Yet, they are not Christ-like. Clean hands, holiness, blamelessness. God wants our conduct. God wants our behavior. God wants our actions. God wants our attitude to be like him. These are people with clean hands. They will stand before the presence of God. They will stand before the glory of God. We pray and I pray that the Holy Spirit through you will cleanse your heart and your spirit so that you will be a person with a clean hands, a person righteous, a person whom your friend can trust, blameless person. He can confide in you. He can trust you whatever at any time. People whose faith stand only in Christ. Who are people who can stand before God? Romans 8, 1 and 2 says that I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercies, present your bodies as what? As a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto him. We are not to conform to this very world. But we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Beloved, our Christianity is nothing without holiness. Clean hands. How do you see yourself? People with what? A clean heart. These are the people God wants them to use, to be used by him to carry his ark. That is Christ in our hearts. Clean hearts, pure hearts. Matthew 5, 8. Bless us are who? Those who are, who are pure in heart and they will see God. Those pure in heart, they will see God. If we can trust God and commit our desires and our thoughts, our purpose, our will and understanding unto him and build our faith in him that he is my all in all. He will glorify himself at all times in all these seasons and people will know that indeed we have God. We want everyone to have a living testimony and that will come only when we have pure hearts and clean hearts. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to clean our hearts. Let us pray together with David in Psalm 51 verse 10 that oh God Create in me what? A pure heart. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. These are people who carry the ark of God wherever they go. God's presence is in him and with them. Those who stand before God, those who king of glory, they can stand before and can declare that I have Christ. Are people who seek him diligently day by day. Verse 6 of Psalm 24 says that such is the generation of those who seek him, those who seek his face. These are people who ascend into the mountain with the ark of God. The Lord desires that you, day by day, you are with him through prayer. You are with him through worship. Your commitment to church. God is near to those who are near unto him. Those seeking God and not those who just want God to fulfill their desires. But who live for God? Who exist for God? And who commit themselves to God? Such people, the presence of God is any time with them. Paul says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And when Christ is in you, you can do all things. Even in your failures, you are a victor. Because not by mind, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. This very year that we are about to enter, may you have the fullness of God in you. So David, in conclusion, said that open, lift up your heads, all you gates. Be lifted up. You everlasting doors. In this Christmas, God is making appeal to us. That he stands at the door knocking of every man's heart. If you hear his voice and open the door, he will come in. 
2023, God wants to come into your heart. That he'll eat with you, he'll be with you, he'll walk with you, and he'll fulfill his covenant with you. How do you open a door? You lift up your heads, O ancient gates. When talk of ancient gates, he is talking about our own life, our flesh, our own desire should be lifted up so that the ancient does give that so that the king of glory may enter into your heart. There are so many ancient doors still with us that is preventing the king of glory to enter. And I pray the Holy Spirit will break that ancient doors. That your desires, that your flesh, that humanism within you, self-dependency, I am a Christian, I am a Christian. No, but Christ lives in me. Those, may you open your life, change a life, a character of you. So that you don't love the world, the deeds of the world. But you offer yourself, Holy Spirit, to fill you. And you walk in this life with joy and peace. That in all things come from God. In every situation, I am for Christ. I believe in him and I trust in him. That my God is ever faithful and never fail me. If even as a one, I am down, I am more than a conqueror. These are the people God wants them to be. Ancient doors, open, lift up your heads. Let your old character lift up its head away. Let your commitment be lifted up unto God. This very year, God is about to do greater things. Individually, God wants to reveal himself. So that Christ wants to enter into it. The church, we should be careful. So that the glory of God doesn't depart from our presence. In Israel, it departed from their presence. They were boasting of God of Israel. But in their sins, it departed. I pray that city church... The glory that have descended will rather blossom and be brighter. God has given us the entire nation of the Netherlands. <laughs> City Church, this is God's time. He has given us once again the entire nation of the Netherlands. Yes, yes. And it is you that the God is going to use. Yes. He has begun here. He has ascended himself. 2023, more cities are going to be conquered by you. But God wants you to open you and lift up you ancient doors. New commitment. That God is going to use me. In our team for 2023, it says repositioning the local church. God is going to reposition us. May God orient your mind. Give you a new mindset that I am ready for Christ. I am opening myself, ancient doors in my life so that King of Glory may enter. As I bring my message to a close. Satan would like to shut your doors. Through sin. Satan may like to prevent you from opening your hearts of gates. To the flesh. But as you lie on God and trust him, the Holy Ghost will refill you. And when you are weak, you will be strong. If Christ overcame the world through his resurrection power, he has given us all the fullness of him that we have been filled by the Holy Ghost and we can overcome. Sinlessness is our nature. Christlessness is our nature. May the Lord fill your heart. May the Lord empower you. May you be able to lift up ancient doors in your life. For the King of glory is ready. He's here with us. And he'll continue to do a great thing. He defeated the devil on the cross. Therefore, you are a victor in Christ Jesus. Now Jesus is ascended and seated in heaven unto you. He said he's interceding unto you. And your strength is not of yourself. But in him is your strength. We are therefore to reflect on this glory of God. That has shown around the whole universe. That God wants to shine once again through us. You are the vessel God is going to use. In your home, you are the glory of God. For the ark of God is your heart. You carry the ark wherever you go. And we pray that the fullness of God with the Holy Spirit will cleanse you of every weakness. In your association with people, they will know that you have Christ. When people are depressed, the presence of you, the, your, your words of you, your prayer of you, your encouragement of you, the encouragement of you will strengthen people. And this is what we pray for. That a church will remain in prayer and steadfastness in the world. 
obedience unto God so that God's presence will be within the church. So wherever city church goes, the presence of God will lead them. We pray that the presence will not just follow us. The presence will lead us. The presence is within us. The ark of God is within us. You carry it or not on Mount Zion, but the mountain of our Christ Jesus. As you lift up yourselves and go to evangelism wherever you go, you are. May the glory of God break through every ancient gate so that when you speak in your presence, whatever it is, God open doors will come and the king of glory will bring many souls unto Christ. This is our mandate, City Church. We are moving with the king of glory. Now every ancient days in Netherlands, with all authority and power, we give that unto you. May it be broken and be open unto you. That any city church member, wherever he is, God through him will break ancient doors over there. And the king of glory will bring more souls unto you. Be filled by the Holy Ghost. Be empowered by the Holy Ghost. Know that Jesus is going to use me as he has started. Rotterdam, you have a mandate. Amsterdam City have given birth to you. Now you are impregnated. It depends on you. You are also to give birth. Rotterdam City Church. Harbour City Church. You are to give birth to another city church. Amen. And we have the conviction that he who has begun a good work will use you to bring it to the perfect completion. From Rotterdam another city. From Utrecht to Den Haag, to Zandam, to even Lelystad, into Maastricht, even far beyond Netherlands. May God, the King of Glory, use you as an ark, wherever you go, so that through him, through you and I, ancient doors of the Netherlands will be broken. Drug addiction will be broken. Immorality will be broken. And the King of Glory will enter every sphere of Netherlands. Even at work, wherever he is. May the King of Glory continue to use us for his glory. Amen. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Please be on your feet as you celebrate. Jesus tried the King of Glory.